All right, Minecrafters, Minecraft Bob Ross, also known as Adam Antarx here, and I want to show you uh, how to build an automatic, a completely automatic sheep farm, and uh, or rather, I suppose, a wool farm. This baby will produce plenty of wool. Uh, so first, I want to show you the finished product, and then we'll get started on the how-to in creative mode. All right, so let's see what we have here. So right here is uh is what this baby looks like i'll jump around and fly to show you uh sort of an literally an overview of it and this is the underside uh of our sheep farm where it collects we're going to be using a minecraft with a hopper to collect the actual wool uh, just so you know i only built this baby hours ago uh, it hasn't even been up and running for uh, my guess is maybe an hour, hour and a half of game time at most. And it's produced actually even more wool than you see here already. Uh, I've distributed some of it to some nearby chests. So this baby will output wool very quickly. In fact, one thing that I'm gauging is uh, whether or not I'm happy with actually having just a single uh, distribution point here. Or uh, or what would we call it? Maybe downloading point. <laughs> for the uh for the chest i might i will probably end up putting a couple more chest each time one of these uh mine carts with a hopper makes a pass over another hopper it drops off eh, i want to say two maybe three pieces uh of maybe three blocks or three items uh, not very much, uh, but it can instantly pick up any number of blocks so if it passes under a stack of 64, a whole, you know, a full stack of, of who knows, you know, wool or, or, or dirt or whatever it is it's picking up. It'll pick those up instantly, but then it won't get rid of them very quickly. Um, so that baby can become overloaded. Uh, so one thing you want to do is just gauge your output and uh, figure that out. Anyway, let's, uh, let's move forward here and go take a look at the upside. Now, uh, you could put all this out in the open where you can see it all, um, I like to conceal sort of the machinery underneath the farm and have the farm part up above ground because this is a base. I built all of this in survival in my base, fair and square, including moving the sheep in. But for the sake of making a somewhat efficient video that's clear, I've decided to show you how to do this in creative mode. We're going to build the same thing essentially in creative mode. Uh, I also made a few stylistic moves on mine, such as using the same color of glass as the wool that that sheep uh, outputs. Part of the reason is uh, you, you hardly ever get to see the color of these sheep, because as soon as they eat grass and they get their wool back, uh, they are already are getting sheared again. This thing goes fast. So as you can see, you don't see any colors here. Uh, and uh, the uh, the mine cart is passing underneath and picking up these various pieces of wool. Uh, you'll notice it hasn't picked up that one, perhaps because it's full until it dumps off. Uh, maybe it's because it's just in that corner. But this baby will give you about a 99% pickup rate, if not a 100% pickup rate. Anyway, let's first go over the things we're going to need, and then we'll go and build one together. Uh, so... Uh, the first thing you're going to need, I filled this chest up here with uh, the items and the number of items that you're going to need. So you may want to just take a moment and pause and just take a look at what you have here. Uh, instead of uh, the, the multicolored uh, glass, I have just substituted all clear glass since that was a stylistic feature that I added. You could always hang a sign in front showing what kind of you know, or, a, or an item frame showing what color of wool uh, you have. There are a lot of ways to indicate that. So regular glass will work fine, and that's what we'll use for the second build just to keep things simple. Uh, I just wanted to mention that you do have some cool stylistic options, of course. Uh, you're going to need dye. Um, if you don't already have colored sheep ready, uh, one dye, for, uh, you know, one piece of dye for each sheep, as you can see here, as you hopefully know there are 16 colors total of dye and that's what we have here uh, you probably won't need white dye since most sheep default to being white or you can occasionally find a brown or a black sheep in the wild um, but chances are you'll need the other 15 colors uh, i still brought it along just in case who knows um, 
glass, uh, I, I would suggest having uh, about five and a half stacks of glass. You'll probably need a little tiny bit less than that, maybe five and a quarter, but it's always best to bring a few extra. Uh, you're going to need a stack of rail and a, about a quarter stack, maybe a little more. I brought 18 pieces of powered rail. You're going to need three hoppers, one of which will go into a minecart and become a minecart with a hopper, as we've seen. So two hoppers and a minecart with a hopper is what that'll end up being. Uh, and then from there, uh, half a stack of redstone dust, half a stack of observers, and half a stack of dispensers. And, you know, how many ever chests you want. For now, we're just going to use one large chest, just like we saw below. And the building material of your choice. For this video, I'm going to be using white concrete. Uh, just because it's easy to see and it stands out from other natural elements. Uh, but, you know, whatever you want. It could be stone, it could be dirt if you prefer. Uh, it could be anything. Alright? Uh, I, I often prefer, as you notice below, stone brick for a lot of my builds. And, of course, you're going to need sheep. Uh, you're going to need 16 sheep, uh, one of each color. Uh, I am bringing a sheep spawn egg to help us out with that, just for the sake of uh, making a good, fast, clear, uh, easy video. All right, anyway, uh, let me go ahead and gather uh, these items together as we need them real quick. We're going to bring our dies with us. We could always come back for these later, doesn't really matter. Uh, we've got a chest, that's good. We've got our dispensers. We're doing this in creative mode, so again, numbers don't really matter to us immediately, but they will matter to you if you're doing your build in survival. Uh, and I believe that's everything we need, yes. Uh, all right. So, uh, yeah. And, of course, I think it's good to have some sort of light source. Uh, we don't really need it in creative all that much, but uh, I'm assuming, you know, of course, you don't need a sheep farm in creative either. So I'm assuming that, uh, of course, you're building in survival. And, again, I built everything you've seen thus far, fair and square, 100% in survival. Uh, but I'm going to show you how to do it. Here we go. There are a lot of different ways to build sheep farms. Uh, you could actually build an automatic sheep farm before um, before uh, they decided, Mojang, Microsoft, whatever you want to call them, decided to uh, introduce dispensers being able to hold shears. Oh yeah, that's another thing we're going to need. Add that to our list. <laughs> we're going to need a minimum a minimum of, uh, hmm, I would say 16, 32, minimum of 16, I prefer 32 shears. We'll get to that in a moment. Uh, what that boils down to is uh, one stack of iron ingots to make those. Uh, it's a little bit of, a, of an investment at first, but it's not so bad. Anyway, as I was saying, uh, the whole thing with being able to put shears and dispensers is nice. Um, and it's convenient, and I love it. But before that, uh, there were ways to actually use pistons to damage the sheep to make them lose their wool, and then to time it so that they would eat the grass, get it back, and then you could use a piston on them again. There were a lot of ways to do that. Uh, but they weren't that great, and of course I remember a time before hoppers existed and you couldn't really collect things anyway. So, um, but now we have everything we need. Uh, and uh, Minecraft has uh, finally decided to be nice to us and to give us something really cool. So why don't we go ahead and get started. Uh, so I've gone ahead and made an area that's about the same dimensions as the area you saw before. Again, you could build this whole thing above ground. If you build it above ground and you don't have naturally occurring grass from the, from the natural landscape to work with, you will also need uh, grass blocks or dirt that you can convert to grass blocks. Um, but, you know, I, I personally think it's best just to build somewhere in your base where there's naturally occurring grass already. Build the mechanical collection side underneath, and then the upper half, the, the sheep farm half up above. Anyway, why don't we get started? Uh, so here we go. The first thing you want to do, uh, I guess you could build it in either order. <clears throat> I prefer to build the sheep farm part first. Uh, the part, the parts that will actually house our sheep. It will take up, gosh, if memory serves, I think it's about 34 blocks long. I want to center it on uh, this area right here. Okay, uh, I'm not sure exactly how long, what we'll end up with, but uh, I know we have enough space here because I built in some extra space, which I recommend. But we're looking for a minimum of about 34 blocks to build this baby. 
So here we go. Uh, the, the glass is going to separate the sheep and hold them in. Uh, I recommend glass and here is why. Uh, if I put glass block here, it counts as a transparent block because it is very much a literal transparent block and it does not inhibit grass growth. So it would actually protect this grass here as grass source blocks so that you can uh, grow your grass back whenever a sheep eats it. That's actually a very important dynamic of this build. So you don't want to use a block in between that will suppress grass growth. But I suppose uh, something like fence could work, uh, except I wonder if maybe they could eat the grass from underneath the fence since it doesn't take up the whole block area. So I personally prefer glass. Um, and it's, you know, just get some sand, cook it up. It's not hard to make glass. Uh, so anyway, uh, so what this is going to essentially look like, uh, why don't we just start here uh, one block in. We have extra space, so this should be fine. I'm just going to go in and just every other block, I'm just going to put a row of glass, just like that. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and so on and so forth, just like that. It should already start to look kind of like what we saw. I could try to fast forward the video or whatever uh, for your convenience, but this won't take that long. This gives you time to build along with me. I don't know if we have too many. We want 16 spaces in between right here. So let's count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Whoa, look at that, my friends. Perfect. I'd like to say that's my Minecraft instinct at work, but it's just plain dumb luck. All right, so from here, what we want to do, let's see, is we want to start building the mechanism that will actually make this baby automatic. Uh, it uses this thing uses a, uh, a surprising, surprisingly low amount of resources, but there are some things you're going to need. Uh, you will have needed to have gone to the nether and to have gotten quartz uh, for your observers. Okay, um, And if you're building a self-sorting system, which we're not going to do just yet today, uh, but if you build one of those in, you will also need comparators, which I believe also require a little bit of quartz if memory serves. So you're going to need some of that nether quartz. Uh, I think about, let's see, each of these takes two to build each of these observers takes two quarts, excuse me, one quartz actually. So you're going to need half a stack of quartz to get those. Half a stack, 32 times one, half a stack. And you're going to need a stack of, uh, of redstone dust to build those. I'm assuming in our inventory that you've already built them. But uh, just so you know, you will need to have gone to the nether. It's not that hard to slip in through a nether portal. Um, mine, maybe go underground, mine up a little bit of quartz and come out safe, but, uh, you can do that however you see fit. Anyway, here we go. The next thing that we want to do is we want to go through and first put in these observers. Now it's important, observers are directionally placed, so depending on what you place them against, I'm placing down on a block, so the redstone part is facing up. The arrow will always be facing towards us, however we orient these. So what I want to do is I want the face of this thing, the little uh, Thomas the Train looking face, the part that observes the block state change, I want that facing in towards this piece of grass. Okay, and so to get that, I actually go out and just place against it. The arrow is towards me. That means the redstone end is out towards me. And as you can see, the face is facing inward. From here, it's pretty simple, my friends. All we have to do is just go right down. One, two, we're going to get 32 of these. Now, you could just do this to one side if you're low on resources. Um, and it could, and it would work. Um... But I like, I like it to be on both sides, depending on which side the sheep is on. I know that I'm going to catch that sheep and shear it no matter where it goes in this little enclosure. But again, you know, that's just because I like a little bit of overkill. This is not absolutely necessary. But honestly, it's not that much more of a cost. It'll work great. 
So we want all these arrows facing out towards us from our perspective right now, out from the center. So they're observing inwardly. Okay, now the next thing we want to do, and this, the way an observer works is when there's a block state change, the observer will uh, observe <laughs> that change immediately in front of it and it will send a redstone signal out of this back end. That redstone signal can then do whatever it is you want it to do. It'll power anything that takes that redstone signal impulse for a moment. Uh, in this case, what it's going to power is going to be a dispenser, which is placed immediately above. And of course, the dispenser will face in towards the sheep. So to get that to happen, you go like this and you place it directly above. Yeah, and just and just go for it from there. Okay, yeah, just like that. Let's see if I can get it from here. No, not quite. There we go. Get a little sideways movement. Yeah, there we go. And this is what's going to activate the shears and actually shear the sheep. Sometimes even if you can fly in creative, it's easier just to ground yourself and just work from the ground. Okay, so there we go facing them inside just like that you can see how this is starting to work now you might think that that it would power just like that but that's not quite true uh, now what you need to do is just place a dot of redstone and what that'll do is it'll catch that signal from below because that signal will go into and power that dirt block uh, you won't be able to see it do anything but it will what you would see is that little redstone light up there and then that powers back this way and powers up the dispenser and all of this happens immediately so as soon as that sheep eats grass that grass goes away and becomes dirt when that happens that observer block underneath catches that and observes it and sends out that signal which activates our shears okay We'll add the shears last. We'll get to that. Okay. Just like that. That's the key right there. Okay. Now, if you wanted to, as an option, you could always make this a little more elaborate. Add a redstone delay here on this. Um, so that, uh, you know, there's a little more time and elapsing in between here. Um, but uh, but we're not really worried about that. All right. Um, the, you don't need that at all. This is this is fine. Um, all right, so that's the main that's the main build right there. Actually, from here it's just a matter of, of making this so that it holds the sheep and keeps them in and so on and so forth. Uh, to do that, all we really have to do is just build up one more layer here on our glass. So let's go ahead and finish the sheep enclosure, and then from there we can. Uh, we can go ahead and uh, start working on the lower part, which I think is a little bit more involved to build at least in uh, in, in survival mode. But it's not hard. It's just, um, I'll explain when we... You'll see it when we get there. I also want to enclose the tops of these here. Just like that. Just going to go right, right on down. Uh-huh. Pretty easy, right? Especially in creative. Creative mode will spoil you. <laughs> okay. uh, and this isn't, so far, this isn't a whole lot harder in, in survival, to be honest. And then from there, you just give it a give it a roof. Now, of course, you know, you may you may want to hold off and wait until you've added your sheep in and then and then come and build that over them, right? But this will hold them. You don't really even have to give them a roof over their head. It doesn't matter. Uh, but what you see here would work just fine, just as it is. All right. So, uh, so from here, let's go ahead and take out our sheep eggs. Now, quick uh, note, word to the wise. If you're doing this in survival mode, the way I recommend, uh, and I'm assuming you will be doing in survival, the way I recommend getting those sheep in there is build yourself some kind of stairs. We can even build it out of glass. For now, it could be dirt, it could be anything, so that you know, so that you and a sheep can run over and hop up here. And what I do is I just bring a piece of wheat along, and I lure each sheep to each enclosure, drop them in, then cover it up, and then go down to the next one until I just fill it up. Just fill it up with white sheep. 
and you can come back and add the dye later. Um, don't, so don't worry about trying to breed up a red sheep and put it into one and then get a blue sheep and put it into another. Just fill it up with whatever color sheep you happen to have on hand, which is usually white, and then come back and, uh, and, and you know, give them the colors you want. So here we go. We're going to simulate that just by using sheep eggs and dropping our sheep in. So we don't care what color they are. We can, excuse me, we can change that later. All right, there's our sheep. Should have 16. Let's just make sure. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. You hear those clicking sounds already when they're eating that grass? Already those uh, those block state changes are getting noted. Now, of course, the, we haven't input the shears yet into these dispensers. So, uh, so they're not shearing the sheep yet, and that's fine. That's a good thing because we don't really have any way to collect that anyway. Not that it would hurt us if it was just sitting on top. Alrighty, our next step is to uh, to put in a uh, a collection system. Now, uh, you've seen the one I made already at the beginning of the video. We're just basically going to replicate that. Oh, and you know what? We can go ahead and color these sheep. Let's do that now. So, in no... I don't know. We could do these in some sort of order. I think that's kind of smart. I kind of like to go like white. Start with white since that's the most generic kind of sheep, of course. Then maybe from there transition to light gray. The reason I kind of like to do it this way is because... Um, not that it matters. These guys are going to be constantly <laughs> sheared anyway. But, uh, but you can see the, the contrast between two otherwise similar looking sheep. Um, anyway, as I use these, I'm going to toss them. And then we'll go from that maybe to gray. Of course, we got a gray one there, but it doesn't matter. Uh, what happened to my gray die? Did I toss my gray die out? I think I did. Whoops. I'm so used to playing uh, survival mode that... Uh, I think I just tossed it right out by accident. That's okay. You just grab it up right there. Gray die. Okay. And here we want black. Okay. So let's go back here. Black die is a thing now. It used to be an ink sack acted as black die, but no longer. Uh, let's go brown now. That's kind of a good transition. Maybe from brown. How about to red? I think that's what I did before on mine. Then maybe from red to green, make it kind of a Christmassy transition. How about that? Then maybe blue. Okay, looking good. Same thing with blue. Lapis lazuli used to act as blue dye. Now you make blue dye from lapis lazuli. There's our light blue. Let's go from light blue to cyan because they're kind of similar. I like to have a sort of color transition going on a little bit here. Maybe from there, lime is a good color. Um, do I have cyan? I guess that is cyan. That's light blue. That's cyan. I am tired, apparently. Let's go yellow. Orange is next. We're almost there, my friends. Magenta. I like to put magenta and pink next to each other normally because they look a lot alike. And did I get purple? No, I guess not. I like to have purple near there too. So there we go. There, there it all is. So we've gotten our sheep made. Now our inventory, our survival inventory is no longer spammed up. By the way, if you're ever playing creative, it's still good to take advantage of that survival inventory for things that you use very commonly and you don't feel like searching through the menus for them. You can just kind of make that like your favorites menu. Just a quick tidbit. Anyway, you can see them eating away, right? So now we're going to put in our collection system. So here we go. Take a good look at what we have so far. It's looking good, right? We have all our different colors of sheep. Now, this the key is, is this needs to be built uh, one block under just like that so the top surface of this you have one block and that way when the uh when the mine cart with hopper uh goes under directly under this dirt it will suck down it will 
it will collect whatever's sitting up above. And we obviously want it to collect off of these two central blocks. Uh, I guess it might not even hurt if one wanted to, to send it out here to collect as well. Maybe for things that fall in the corner, like those pieces we were looking at earlier that weren't collecting. But it doesn't really matter. Uh, the, you're, you're not going to have to worry about this thing not collecting. If anything, the only concern is that it will over-collect and building enough chests to keep up with it. Uh, you might have noticed on my other build, by the way, because I just like to do cool stylistic stuff, that I used a, uh, I was using a slab for this. So you can actually use a slab for a rail cart as long as it is at an even level, just like this. See how that's at the same level? But, uh, but I'm just going to use a regular whole block for this for now. And it'll work fine. I'm going to have to dig down one more to give us a little more. A little more room. We'll cross that bridge if and or when we come to it. But for right now this will work great. And I want to just make sure, hear that cave sound? I just want to make sure that we get at least all the way to these end blocks. That's the last part really where we're, where wool's going to show up. So right there. And then I want it to turn one past that. So we're going to use a rotation, um, sort of a rotational model for this. You could also have a system set up with powered rails on the ends with a signal um, rails that, uh, that make them repower and send it back the other way. Then you could actually have two carts running linearly back and forth instead of one going around in circles. But I think the one going around in circles works just fine and it saves us a little iron. Uh, anyway, and not to mention a little bit of time. Uh, what we want to do next is uh, go ahead and install the rail. This, is, this can be a little bit tricky in uh, survival. You might need to build you a little row of dirt or something there to work from so you can stand here and see over the side and place your rail. But we're flying around, so we aren't worried at all. All right, so I'm just going to switch up some things here uh, more to where our current build is now. We're going to be working with hoppers, rails, and mine carts and all that good stuff. So here we go. So the first thing I want to do is just start placing some rails. We'll determine where we want the hoppers to go in a moment. All right, so we know that on the ends it's going to do a circle, sort of. We don't want that small of a circle, though. The trick is, is you get one that's and you used to keep one one ahead of the other minimum, and then you can just place both of these down. And ever so many blocks, you want to put your uh, powered rail, right? I'm thinking. Now the other trick is is I want to make sure that the powered rail isn't interacting with the minecart with the hopper because as you may know when you power up a hopper it actually loses its ability to function as a hopper it turns it off which is normally a good feature but uh, but just to avoid that possible risk uh, I want to make sure that when I'm right here in between these I don't have powered rails I want well actually when I'm here I don't want powered rails but these spaces in between I can power up just fine. And that might be a good rationale uh, for, for placing all of them. I did mine about every three blocks. So if memory serves, I believe I went like here, powered rail, and then maybe went skip three, one, two, three, powered rail here, and so on and so forth. Why don't we hold to that pattern? So one, two, three, power. One, two, three, good to get a rhythm going, power. One, two, three, power. Three, double check. Yeah, it's still looking good. Just like that. Yeah, and it should be pretty pretty much symmetrical with the other side. It doesn't have to be, it doesn't matter, but I think it is. So I'll take it. Okay, and now we'll go ahead and oh, match that. And from here it's pretty easy. We'll throw this off a little bit when we add the hopper, but that's no big deal. We'll determine. I'll make a recommendation on where to put that. I think it depends on the rest of your base. Uh, so I would say wherever your entrance is for this chamber. Let's pretend for a moment that our entrance is, mm, I don't know, say about in the middle. About right here. 
something like this. Okay. We come down from our base or whatever, come down some stairs, and we're here. So I want I think the best place to put your your primary chest, at least your first chest, is you know, right when you walk in the door. So you can come down here and grab some wool and get back out as quickly as possible. Although, again, uh, I think if you really want to do this right, you could put a lot more of these, maybe one in the mid middle of every one of these spans of three, uh, and have a whole bunch of chest collecting. And I think that's eventually what I'm going to have to do with mine. But for now, we're just going for the build that will get us started. So what I'm going to do is I want to make sure I am facing this hopper down. I often will just put a block and then go on top of that block and put our hopper. Now again, hoppers are kind of like we were talking about before with um, observers uh, or, or with logs. Hoppers are one of those pieces that's oriented based on your perspective relative to the block. So if I'm, so if I'm facing against uh, at the top end of a block, that hopper will be built facing down into that block. We're, this block here we're looking at is where the chest is going to get. So I could do that and have it feed down actually into two separate chests. That might be one good way to do it and kind of split it up and make it easier. Why don't we experiment with that build here instead of what I built before? So it will cost us, you know, one more chest. It costs no more hoppers, by the way. And we'll do a chest here. Oh, let's, I was crouching, so that's a new feature in Minecraft that it wants to, uh, when you crouch, it'll place it separately from the other. And then we'll place one here, like that. Now we have two separate chests, and we've uh, doubled our, our space here for collection. Now you might notice here that I can't open this baby right now, and this is where uh, maybe slabs uh, could become useful. Since we're building this with uh, concrete, I don't think concrete slabs exist yet, uh, why don't we use a quartz slab? That looks a little bit like, a little bit like white concrete. What I want to do is just maybe put that right here where my chest is. That'll allow me to open that chest. I like it. Then we we'll just go voila. And up. Oh, and don't forget, my friends, you got to crouch to place. You got to be quick with that crouch here. <laughs> I'm not quick enough. Here, let's uh, just get us a place to stand. Now it's easier crouch and place it right over the hopper just like that uh, and uh, when that when the mine cart with the hopper passes over that uh, over that hopper it will drop two or three we can test it of its uh, of its contents into that hopper and eventually into that chest all right uh, we got to power these uh, rails here uh, and we'll be set uh, to do that, uh, actually, I didn't include that at the beginning, did I? So we need some redstone torches. Why don't we go ahead and calculate how many of those we're going to need. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Okay, 16. So that's 16 more pieces of redstone. Uh, redstone is easy to find. It's not in short supply. So... But we're going to go here and just grab out, well, we only need one in creative, but we would get 16. Let's go ahead and put those into place now. Da -da. Always double check, make sure they're powered. See how they glow now. Uh, powered rails, when they are not powered, function as uh, brakes. They actually stop a minecart in its tracks, which is useful to know too. But we don't want this one to ever stop. We want it to just continually go around and around and around and to collect. So there it is, my friends. There's our system. The last thing we need is just to put in our mine cart. Now this can be trickier than you might think because we got to get it to, to, to go. So you want to make sure to put it straight down on a powered rail. And then you've got to give it a push somehow to get it going. That can actually be kind of tricky because, as you can see, we don't have uh, room, right? So w what I'm going to do to make that happen, pretty simple, a little trickier in survival mode perhaps, is uh, I'm just going to 
go here and see if I can make myself a space to push it. Not the easiest thing to do. Let's see. And if I can't do that, I might have to uh, do some bad things here to Mr. Purple Sheep. <laughs> Let's see. Actually, you know what? How about the space in between Mr. Purple Sheep? There's a good place for us to get in and do our work. Aha! That's how you do it. So pick a space in between your sheep, if you've already put the sheep there, uh, and then you won't disturb them at all. Now we'll just replace that with some dirt. We'll just turn to grass here. But we have grass blocks on hand, so why not? Now as you can see, this baby is just going around and around and around. Perfect. And it's never going to stop doing that Hopefully, unless the server has an issue or something. And if it does, just come back and get it started just like we did here. Now, it's going to keep going around. And um, it's not collecting anything for obvious reasons. But let's do a little test. Let's get... Hey, how about these two torches? And let's wait until after it's passed. Okay, right now. And let's drop those two torches right there. It'll pick them up and it'll drop them in. One torch, okay, it dropped one. That's interesting. Did it pick up both? I think it did. Let's see if it drops the other. Huh, no. Maybe it dropped it over there. Yes, it did. Interesting. Okay. So I guess it was faster than I thought. All right. Well, this thing is working great. It's working fine. It is doing its job. And so we just want to let it just go around and around just like it's doing. Uh, now, the only thing we have to do is uh, add some shears. Uh, well, that's pretty easy to do. Uh, all we have to do is get some iron ingots and craft some shears. You don't even need a crafting table to do that. Uh, actually, uh, in, survival, in creative mode, we can cheat even better and just grab shears out directly from right here. So why don't we go ahead and do that? Now, even in creative mode, we have to, uh, we have to place these manually. So... What I'm going to do now is just uh, kill everything else that is in our uh, our inventory. Because we don't need it anymore. Not one bit of it. The only thing we need to do is pop in those shears. Uh, the only way that this or any other sheep farm you build will not be fully automated is that when these shears fire off, they do use a little bit of their durability. Uh, so my recommendation is eventually, especially if a good iron farm going, fill up all of these defense, you know, dispenser slots with us shears and this baby will just keep going. Otherwise, or even then, uh, it's the case that you will want to come and occasionally, uh, every depending on how many hours you play per day, you will want to come in and just check on your shears and make sure they're holding up and hey, uh, if they if they don't, if they break down and this thing just keeps running, it won't hurt anything. It just won't collect um, any, more, uh, sh any more wool. And that might be a good thing. Maybe you don't want it to just keep collecting and overloading. And so this puts a type of timer on it, right? Just a thought. Anyway, here we go. Let's, uh, let's get a whole bunch of these. We're just going to manually put them all down here. It actually takes a while to do this in creative, but it's no big deal. We'll just put them all here. Let's see, yep, just like that. And just give me a moment. And I'll get them all in. We're going to need uh, 32 of these. Again, the equivalent of one stack one stack of, uh, of iron. Okay. Almost. Talking to my wife. 
Okay, that sounds good. Hey, tell him that I'm making a video. My seven-year-old son is, uh, likes to watch my Minecraft videos. That makes me very happy. I recently made a video for him. By the way, see how that durability there is going down? Okay. A little bit. See how it's on the green now instead of just being blank, just like any tool that you would use? Now, I suppose... I know you can enchant uh, shears with, uh, you know, with things like silk touch and such. I don't know if they take unbreaking three or not. I wouldn't bother, especially if you have a good source of iron, because it's not like they're terribly expensive to just redo. Be far more expensive in terms of your time to be bothering with enchantments. Also, um, if you know that there's certain colors of wool that you'll never use, you don't have to build it this big. So, oh, dropped him for some reason. Let's double check. Must have just missed the spot. Uh, you could build this, uh, you know, if it for example, I used to like, and I guess I still like to build a lot with red and brown wool. I like to do red and brown carpets and use those two colors together. And I like purple and yellow a lot. So maybe if I were doing that, I might just have a red sheep, a brown sheep, a purple sheep, and a yellow sheep. And just don't worry about the rest. Uh, <laughs> my son really likes, my seven-year-old really likes the color blue. So, uh, you know, I, he might have a blue sheep and maybe he likes purple. So he might have a blue and a purple sheep. And that's it. So you don't have to have all of them. But I'm kind of thinking, why not? Why not have it ready? Why not do it all? If, if you're going to go through the trouble of building this, why not, why not go all out? Go big or go home. That's what they say, right? And there it is, my friends. There it is. Uh, as you can see, this baby's already starting to work. And... Um, these pieces of wool should start uh, getting picked up here in a moment. I see it. some purple wool sitting around there. Let's see if it gets sucked down. It should. Yeah. There it goes. It's probably just full. Uh, maybe to its capacity and it's just not picking them up just yet. But it's doing it. It's getting them. Let's go check our uh, chest. See what we got. Look at all that. Yeah, it's uh, it's going. So yeah, the the hopper only holds like any hopper. One five different things at once. So if it's picked up five other colors, then it wouldn't pick up the purple till it's empty and comes back around. So sometimes they'll sit there for a while, and I think that's what we saw happening earlier as well. By the way, uh, you don't have to normally have this space open around the edge. I just did that so that we could look at both the, the top and bottom of it sort of at the same time so you could see the big picture on how this looks. All right, uh, there was one other thing we wanted to do just for looks, uh, and and that was to maybe add a top to it. Well, we can do that just for funsies. Uh, and so I'm just going to go down and just give it a top. Because, you know, if it rains or something, I protect my sheep from the, from the elements. Give them a comfortable life. It's the least I can do. All right. And there it is. And again, in my other build that I showed you, uh, I... Uh, I actually used some color coding here with the glass to, uh, to to make it look a little better and maybe to give it a purpose to remind myself of which sheep is what color. And maybe that way if something happened to one of my sheep, they died for some weird reason, maybe they got struck by lightning, who knows, uh, I, could, I could know uh, what color to make that sheep based on the glass around them. So it may serve a bit more of a purpose than I thought. Anyway, my friends, that's it. That right there is your uh, is your sheep farm, your automatic sheep uh, and wool farm. Uh, this baby will work great. From here, I might end up doing a follow up video on this, uh, on on going through and creating a self sorting system from this. That means we would have to build down maybe about four or five more blocks 
underneath to have room to build that in uh, where it could actually sort the different colors of wool into their own individualized chest. That would allow it to collect a lot more wool and it would also make it easier for you to go and get whatever you want. So you would essentially not only have a sh uh, wool collection device, you would also have a vault for all of your wool, right? Um, some of this extra space here can be used to place extra chest. Uh, so you could build a vault where you have all your different colors of wool or maybe your carpets or your other or your banners or your other things that you build from wool, right? And so, uh, but, but generally, it's just a rule of thumb. I like to give myself one, one to three extra spaces on any build so I have room to maneuver around or to maybe put some chest or a crafting table or something like that if I decide I want it later. All right. Anyway, there it is, my friends. You can see it's working great. Uh, if you build this, I promise it will serve you well. Anyway, uh, this has been Minecraft Bob Ross. Uh, as always, I wish you the best. And as always, until next time, my friends, I wish you happy Minecrafting. Take care.